So, Sarah, congratulations on being a DeWitt Town Councilor elect. Um, what was it about that campaign that's already had you shifting gears and thinking towards the next year? Sure. So I think we need to back up. When I was interested to run for the town of Dewitt, it was more an extension of my public service. Um, being a military officer um, geared me towards identifying issues within the community and the local you know, the local area and how we can make it better. Um, I joined the town board um, with the same ideas and the same the same thought process. It was actually when I was out on the campaign trail and listening to all of the community members, um, they they were, it, it, it almost was like a repeat story. Um, well, what I'm hearing on the news isn't necessarily going to make my everyday life better. Um, for example, my kiddos, my street being an example, we don't have sidewalks. Um, so my child can't even go to our neighbor's house unattended. Um, so we're restricting that sense of independence and in, in children. And then it spirals. You, you've got physical activity and, you know, ability to connect to community. But it was really those um, those everyday conversations that we I realized we were missing something. Um, and the sidewalks happened to be the part that spurred it. Uh, so here I am. Um, I guess we would credit the, uh, the Town of DeWitt campaign trail that is um, the igniting force behind this. So was the sidewalk issue actually the single issue that that motivated you to run for town council in the first place? It, it was it was absolutely one of the primary issues. Um, I live on a through fair street. And like I said, my kiddos can't go anywhere. The neighborhood is essentially isolated because kids can't transverse across the street. Um, and there, there were other issues that um, I think our town's doing a fantastic job on. I think that they might um, it, it might be helpful to have some more support to get some of those ideas off of the ground um, in terms of programming and services provided to the community. Before we could talk about Washington, the issues there, you know, if I'm a voter and I just put you in office at, in DeWitt and, and I live in your community and now you're saying you want to run for something else, how do you how do you address that issue when somebody is going to bring that up? Sure, I, I understand. Um, I think first and foremost, uh, when we're talking about the, this issue, um, I, I, um, I jumped into the DeWitt Town Board race because I wanted to improve my community. Um, during that cycle, I realized that my experience and my skill set can offer so much more to the community. And by, jump, by um, announcing my candidacy at the federal level, I'm able to try and fight and ensure for all of those issues that the folks at the local level are needing and ensure that they're coming back down um, with the funding and the programming that are needed at the local level. What have you seen in the congressional campaigns here locally over the last, well, maybe since John Kacko beat Dan Maffei uh, about six years ago or so, um, what have you seen that's made you think that you might have been a better candidate or could be a better candidate facing uh, now a longer term incumbent? <laughs> Sure. Um, so I think the thing that sticks out the most is I, I am a parent of small children. Um, I am living the life of a lot of our folks here in the community. Um, every day there is something, there is a challenge. And I think we're needing representation that understands the challenges and is willing to fight them, not because that they know of them on a platform level, but they have been entrenched in them on the daily grind. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I have a sick kiddo right now who's actually behind me. First day of the campaign launch and I have a sick kiddo that, that's home. Um, you roll the punches and you do what you can do. And I think that's what a lot of parents are doing. And if we're able to uh, kind of shift it and help lift some of those um, challenges, that's what I'm for. Where do you see yourself on the political spectrum? So I am running on the democratic spectrum. And as a former military officer, the Department of Defense did provide some services and programming that I am absolutely looking to bring um, down to our community level. Um, and really, at the end of the day, though, I'm elected by the people and I'm there to serve for the people. So as long as I'm understanding the issues that are affecting the folks in our local communities, those are the issues that are important to me. So are you would you consider yourself a progressive, a liberal, a conservative within the democratic structure? Kindly, I'm going to try to avoid uh, adding labels. I, I'm looking at myself as a mom and a veteran. I've, I um, entered my professional career in the military where you put your personal uh, beliefs uh, aside to accomplish the mission and the goal, and that's all I'm looking to do. I'm looking to connect with the community, understand what their true issues are, and then take them back to Washington and fight for them. Do you have any models within uh, current elected leaders in Washington that you, you look to as good examples of, of you uh, following their, their tone that they've set? 
I, th I think there's a few, um, but at the end of the day, there's only one Sarah Clee Hood, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to represent um, the community here at Central New York. We're a unique, unique band of folks, so to try and uh, pull pull apart different pieces of um, other congressional folks that are serving, um, I I might be slighting myself and my character for all of the skills that I may have as well. If you were a representative of Sarah Clee Hood right now, how would you have voted on the infrastructure bill in the House of Representatives? I absolutely would have supported it. Why? I think um, at the end of the day, what I've learned on the campaign trail is folks are needing those support mechanisms. Um, they're not necessarily in place right now. And I think that we need to be looking at ways to make people's lives and quality of life greater. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we're doing the best that we can be doing right now for the folks that are on the ground um, living the daily lives that they are. Do you think it would have been worthwhile to continue to negotiate and trying to get something more and, and attached in one giant package? Or was it better to pass something and get that part done than to then keep fighting for more? I think as everybody watched that on play on the national stage, we realized that it's a much more complex problem than um, what the bill is able to directly affect. Um, but, but I'm a working mother. I think that there's absolutely room that we could provide some further support for young families, uh, particularly when it comes to the newborn stages and the early life cycles that we're experiencing. What would you say about the job that John Katko has done so far? I, I think there's room for improvement. I think there's room for a leader out there that's willing to fight for the issues that affect our community directly. Um, I think that there's room for somebody that's willing to uh, step out in front versus uh, claiming victory at the end. What's your opinion about what the future of 81 and the surrounding infrastructure projects that will be included in that, uh, what that will entail? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, it's been out there. For, it's been out there for 15 years. I'm sure you have an opinion about it. I do have an opinion about it. I think that when we need to take a step back and realize that uh, Syracuse is um, is our hub, uh, right? People fly into Syracuse Hancock Airport because they are looking for something to do. I think that it would behoove us if we um, fail to realize where our cultural centers are and the importance that they play in terms of not only supporting the suburbs but also the actual community and the folks that are living here. So what does that translate into in terms of practical choices that were, would be made? If I mean, if you're a member of Congress, you have to be able to say to your fellow members of Congress, we need, say, $2 billion to build a highway in our community, and here's why we need it. How would you make that case? I think you go back to the facts and the data. It, there needs to be a replacement structurally and infrastructurally that the bridge is not um, is not where it needs to be to maintain the overflow that it's having. And then I think we look at the culture and the social aspects of what it's done to our city historically, and we find better ways around it. I don't think the solution that we have right now is it. It's been, um, it's been an iterative cycle of, um, of a myriad of problems that go from socioeconomic to health disparities. And I think that we really need to investigate what the best option is and that maybe we don't have it right now. When you, I don't, I don't understand your answer. I got to be honest. What do you mean we don't have the answer? The way it is now with the elevated highway, or or going to the community grid option? Absolutely, the way that it is now with the elevated highway. Um, and I know that there have been other options passed around. I think the community grid is an excellent option for our community. And does it bother you what that uh, might do to say Dewitt, where you're representing the community on the town council, or you will be at least next year? Um, in terms of maybe some added flow of traffic through that 481, 81 DeWitt, Fayetteville uh, corridor? Sure. So it, it goes back to, it goes back to why I'm running. I was elected to represent the town of DeWitt and there are very many opinions in the town of DeWitt surrounding what should happen with 81, 481. And I think that at the end of the day, DeWitt needs to come together and we need to have a joint voice. I'm not sure that we have one right now. I'm not sure that we will. Personally, I live a quarter mile from 481 the way the crow flies. I hear the traffic at night. I hear the air brakes when they're going off. It's not an ideal situation, but again, we need to look at the bigger picture. If the uh, city, if the city of Syracuse should be um, should be compromised in terms of the abilities um, to grow there and prosper there, we may not have those other amenities that we have right now, like an airport that is 15 minutes away. Uh, did you grow up thinking you might one day run for Congress, or no. was there any point when you in high school, college? Last I, week, I did uh, in high school. I did run for VP, and my line was "Vote Clee for VP." Um, Very nice. But, 
No, no, I did. I did not grow up in a politically active family. Um, I grew up with conservative roots. And what I found was my service in the military opened my eyes to um, a world greater than myself. Um, my, one of my greatest joys serving in the military was being able to positively affect change in my military troops, um, being able to make their quality of life better. Have and you, I think, go ahead. I, well, I was going to ask you about the majority of military members are at least end up being uh, Republicans. Um, when if they register in a party, maybe it's after their service. Did you did you vote Republican in the past or were you registered as a Republican and now you're a Democrat or how have you seen that in terms of party and how you voted in your past record? Uh, my past record has been voting Democrat. And, were, and then so were you registered as a Democrat, too? Yes. OK. Yep. Did you find yourself um, with others in the military that were thinking alike with you or did you find yourself on the other side of arguments often or discussions? Um, well, maybe I don't mean arguments, but. You, Discussing, discussing issues? Uh, when I was in the military, I avoided any political discussions. It was an apolitical service that I served in. And um, I think some of my some of my colleagues may be surprised right now to see me running on the Democratic line. What, what do you not look forward to about this run? Like, what do you see as the challenge that that you maybe you've heard about as you start to learn more about how this works that you that you wish you could just zip ahead to to next November? Sure. <laughs> um, I think, well, I, when you look at the larger community, every, we're, we're burnout on politics. I think um, there, there's just pe people, people are kind of tired. Um, I'm not, and as a public servant, I, um, I really just wanna be able to, to be able to have those conversations to find that connection without um, having an emotional turnoff because people are tired of the political aspects of public service. Um, and if I could, I would, um, I would love to pass through the winter, just period. <laughs> sure. sunshine. Yeah, well, any rational central New Yorker probably would say that. Yeah. Uh, one more political question before, before we wrap it up. Within the Democratic um, Party now, there's several people coming forward. Obviously, you're now adding to a list of two or three or, or maybe more um, that are interested in this seat. How do you envision that playing out? Is it going to be through the Democratic Party process in each county? and then it will be resolved? Or do you see this going to a primary in June? Um, I, think, I think it's going to go to a primary. If any of our past democratic elections have shown us anything, um, the primary is where the community speaks and the community has their voice of who they support. And have you supported any of the other candidates before? Did you, did you, did you support Dana Balter before? I did. Yeah, and do you know if she's gonna run again? I haven't heard her actually say she is. Usually she says it about four years in advance. But so far, have you talked to her? I'm unable to confirm Dana's status. Okay, well, we'll ask her then. That's okay. Uh, anything that you'd like to add uh, as you just give uh, a message maybe to the community as you as you get this rolling? No, I'm, I'm Sarah Lee Hood and I'm running for Congress. I'm a full-time working mom. I'm a veteran. I work in nonprofit and economic development. I understand the daily struggles that we're going through. Um, and I understand that the folks in Washington are disconnected to to the lives that we're living here at the local level. And I'm all about trying to make that better. Well, thank you. Congratulations on deciding to run. That's a such a big step and uh, the community appreciates it. So thank you very much. All right, great. Thanks, Matt. Okay, we'll see you again. Take care. All right.